Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. I wrote a post just a few days back featuring a comparison between many PCs and servers and the response was overwhelming. And it really shows me that you guys, like myself, are very interested in many PC technologies, micro servers, very home efficient hardware for running tomorrow's home labs. So stick around, we're going to discuss all things mini PC, especially related to VMware vSphere, which I know many of you are running in the home lab. And don't worry, we're not gonna leave Proxmox and others out of the discussion. So let's dive right in to this exciting topic of mini PCs. Like me, I know you guys are thinking about the next hardware purchase in your home lab. Well, knowing me, I was on Amazon the other day and I was just browsing around and saw this little device, the GMK Tech G2 Nook Box. And I said to myself, what if I purchase one of these and just as a blind test to see how easy or challenging it would be to run something like VMware ESXi on this little device. Now, what are the specs of the GMK Tech G2 Nook Box? Well, this micro PC sports an Intel N100 processor. One of the things that really appeals about this processor and many others in the Alder Lake family is the power efficiency with which they come. This processor has a TDP value of six watts and with turbo enabled, it can burst up to 25 watts. It has 12 gigs of memory, uh, which Honestly, there are some better deals out there, different manufacturers where you can get 16 gigs of memory paired with the N100 for roughly the same price, maybe even cheaper. However, those are a bit larger than this form factor. As you can see, I can literally fit this in a palm of my hand. So this form factor is really, really tiny when thinking about running virtual machines, what we're able to do with it. Uh, it's got dual one gig NICs, now, one thing I want to mention, again, this was bought site unresearched, so to speak. So I didn't really even look at the chipset uh, on the network controllers, but these are Realtek NICs. And any that have installed VMware vSphere, you know that in the later releases of vSphere, uh, there are definitely problems with Realtek NICs and the drivers. However, you can use a USB NIC, which is what I did. And ironically, the USB NIC is a Realtek adapter, which VMware does support USB Realtek adapters. So keep that in mind. If you happen to pull the trigger on one of these devices, don't really take a look at the network adapter chipset. And you do find that it has the Realtek adapter in there you're still able to snag a USB Ethernet adapter. Uh, if you're putting on Proxmox or other open source hypervisors, they're gonna load right up, uh, no problem. In fact, I threw Proxmox 8.x on this device and it came right up with the network. Everything was great. Also, this unit came with 128 gigs of SSD storage. So not NVMe, it does accept NVMe, in the 2242 slot. However, it is the B and M keyed NVMe drives, which are a bit more obscure. Now, can this little device with four cores and four threads run virtual machines? That's the question I had. And here is what I found out. So I wanted to show you guys that I'm connected to the GMK Tech G2 Nook Box, the ESXi host client. So as you can see, I've got network connectivity established to the server itself. I have a number of Ubuntu server virtual machines that I have cloned off. So I've got one through 10, and I want to show you guys, I've got one through five powered on currently. I have also added this server to my home lab vCenter server. The monitoring in vCenter is much better. So I really like the graphs that you get here. So as you can see, there have definitely been spikes to 100% on the CPU. Uh, and each of these no doubt corresponds to when I fired up 
a new Ubuntu server virtual machine. So I can show you, I've intentionally left 6 through 10 powered off, and I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to go through and just show you really how responsive, though, this little box is, even though it is four cores and 12 gigs of memory, as you can see. So I'm going to basically just show you how well this little Nook Box G2, as well as the Intel N100, handles the virtual machines. So as you can see, I've got six spinning up. I can buzz through. I'm going to go ahead and uh, power up the remainder of the virtual machines. And as you guys know, this can literally kill a server if you go through and power on too many virtual machines at once. How well it actually deals with the load that's placed upon it. Now, if I go back, we're no doubt going to see some saturation on the performance metrics. As you can see, that last refresh, we indeed have 97.07% CPU, and that's likely going to stay elevated for just a bit. Let me just show you guys. I can open up consoles and take a peek around on the virtual machines, and I'll show you guys just uh, how well actually it deals with things. And I've already got a console connection to 01, 02, and now we've got, can't remember which one I clicked on, if it's 04. So we've got 04 coming up currently. As you guys can see, I mean, it is definitely responsive. And it is doing a good job of keeping up with the load, in my opinion, of what I'm throwing at it. So let's see how well it can pull down a Docker container and run that for us. So fairly snappy, responding to commands, pulling down a Docker container. See, we've created the Docker container. And as we can see, we've got it up and running. So that's on Ubuntu 01. So thinking about this little box as a Docker container host, or if you want to play around with Kubernetes, maybe spinning up uh, three nodes uh, and running something like MicroKates or K3S, uh, this would be a perfect solution for that. So I picked up this little device for $149. And I know many of you would probably say, Brandon, there are much better deals out there when it comes to many PCs. However, keep in mind, I didn't research this. I didn't go out and say, what is the least expensive with the same amount of hardware specs? And I know I've browsed and actually found some that are better value for the price. I wanted to use this though as an experiment, what this class of hardware is capable of when it comes to virtual machines. And I know many of you will stop me right there and say, now wait a minute, Brandon, for $150, I can buy a dual socket refurbed server with 512 gigs of memory and 16 cores. Yes, that is absolutely true. However, these types of devices, I think for individuals that may run five, six virtual machines, they want to play around with Docker. They want to experiment with Kubernetes. They want to run a few containers for home lab services, maybe Pi-hole, AdGuard, Technidium, uh, many other services that they want to play around with in the home lab. And at a TDP value of six watts, I would much rather have this running 24 by seven by 365 than a legacy refurbished server that may be eating a kilowatt of power in a month's time. My home lab currently runs at around 800 watts of electrical power. And quite frankly, it adds up. And I know in many countries, the electric bills are exorbitant when it comes to running appliances 24 by seven by 365. When I think about a lab refresh, while a year, year and a half ago, I had my mind set on maybe a full-blown server, rack mount server, uh, along the lines of the super micros that I have currently, except with a newer model, with all of the options in the mini PC market, with the powerful hardware that we have access to, uh, these types of devices are very, very compelling. I would much rather run three, four of these at 
a max of 25 watts compared to my 800 watt monster when I think about the home lab. Well guys, I, this has been a really fun episode to take a look at the mini PC market that is to me exploding. And it's really, really interesting to me to see just how powerful these devices have become in the last couple of years. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more great content coming you guys way. Keep on home labbing, stay safe out there guys, and I will see you in the next video.